India was to achieve a high level of indigenization in a whole range of products, including in light engineering and consumer appliances. Doing that, however, is not so simple. The air conditioner is a good example of the challenges that we face when we want to finish or rather import the complete finished product versus importing parts and manufacturing them locally and yet doing it in a cost optimal way. So I decided to look at the air conditioner itself as an example of a journey of indigenization and where we are in that process. And I'm quite happy to be joined by B. Thyagarajan, Managing Director of Blue Star, to do that. Mr. Thyagarajan, thank you so much for joining me. So we're going to talk about the journey of an air conditioner. But what I will, uh, what I will try and do today is also use that journey of an air conditioner or the manufacturing of one to look at the larger India manufacturing story. So this, of course, we're talking about a light engineering or consumer appliances business. But I'm sure as you extend it, uh, we could also look at the state of manufacturing as a whole. So let's come back to the story of a uh, air conditioner and how it is manufactured today in India. So you can start wherever you want to start. Uh, thank you, Govind. It's a pleasure interacting with you. Um, so the air conditioner market uh, has been growing and still the penetration level in the residential segment is just 7% or so. And the last year, uh, the total volume uh, in the country uh, sold was uh, close to 8 million units. Uh, this context is very important. Yeah. For the China uh, domestic market uh, will be close to 90 million units, okay, as against our 8 million. If you look at what China produces, including their exports, it will be close to 120 million units. So in uh, your, they manufacture air conditioners like a pencil. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what we should remember when we talk about the manufacturing of air conditioners. That's a scale. So what is the, what an air conditioner contains? It, uh, there is a sheet metal uh, for the outdoor unit, what we call, and uh, there is a compressor there, and there is a motor to for the heat exchanger, and there is a coil which serves as a heat exchanger. And there is a refrigerant. Now, uh, then there is an indoor unit which is getting the refrigerant which is cool. Then there is a heat exchanger through the coil, through your fan, it happens. Okay, so there is a sheet metal work, there is a coil work, there is an assembly, there is injection molded plastic inside, and there is controller for setting the temperature and other features. So there is electronics. Air conditioner is also a highly regulated industry. I keep saying it is as regulated as tobacco or alcohol, except that there is no syntax. So I will list that as well in order to understand this. The GST on air conditioner is 28%. It is in the highest slab. But it's always been very high. It, has to be, it used to be in 90s and all, excise duty of 150%, 100 mm. like that, it all happened. But uh, then... The GST regime, it is in the highest lab. The second is connected with the energy efficiency because in 7% penetration, if air conditioners are going to consume so much of energy, when the penetration goes up, rightly, the how more energy efficient air conditioners can be designed and manufactured. And over the years, uh, in the past 15 years, the energy labeling norms have become stringent and stringent. Today, we will be at uh, at uh, at the highest level in the globe, uh, the, we we have achieved that maturity in the country thanks to Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Every couple of years, the energy efficiency is being improved. But what's an indicator of that energy efficiency? For example, so how much units you know, of power you was, you consume? Yeah. So in uh, let us say in year two thousand, you bought a one and a half ton air conditioner. If you are buying a five star inverter air conditioner today. It consumes only 20% of the power it consumed in 2000. So 80% reduction has been achieved over the years. So this is due to the compressor efficiency and there is a variable frequency drive which controls the speed of the compressor and it is connected with the coil design. Now, the third element is connected with the ozone depletion. So Montreal Protocol called for the refrigerants which are used you, when it is let out in the air due to leakage or anything, creates a, a problem for the ozone layer. So, therefore, that was to be eliminated. That program is over. 
But the substitute which came for ozone depletion resulted in global warming. So more friendly you are towards ozone, you will become higher global warming. It is inversely proportional. Mm. So we eradicated one problem, we acquired another problem of creating global warming potential. So there is a Kigali or Paris calls for how to go to near zero global warming. Mm. So there is a new regulation connected with that. Air conditioners come under e-waste rules as well because quite a bit of electronics happens there. Now, India Cooling Action Plan is a framework under which Government of India is dealing with the bilateral agencies in order to commit the targets. So, what is the global scenario? In, in uh, any of the international forum, G7, G20 and all, you take it, there is a carbon footprint. In carbon footprint, there are many industries which are causing this. Now, in the consumed articles, the automobile and air conditioners will come as number one and two. Mm. Lighting comes, but lighting through LED has been uh, uh, solved. Mm. Advent of e-vehicles have solved the automobile problem. Mm. The air conditioners, we do not have yet a breakthrough technology. Quite a bit of things are happening in energy efficiency improvement, but you don't have a breakthrough technology. Now, India Cooling Action Plan defines how India will move forward to keep the energy consumption under check. This is where we are. Now, within this whole ambit of things, I call it as highly regulated industry. You, you do have energy efficiency, global warming, ozone depletion, e-waste, India Cooling Action Plan. All these are happening and the industry has to grow. Now, fortunately, the growth and the regulations are moving in the same way. You cannot have an industry growing regulation here, then you will have the collapse. You should not have regulations where the industry is left out, you, the industry won't grow. But so far it has happened well. Now, air conditioners, fortunately, are now becoming a necessity as well due to higher, you know, the architecture of the houses, and the higher temperature being felt by the people and the comfort levels that are required in humid conditions, it is, it is growing. But it is nowhere near China. The, our growth rate, I would say, is at some CAGR of 10%. It, it, when it will move to the next level, we do not know. We all hope that it is going to happen in four or five years. I'll come to that a little while later. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, how the market evolved? Market evolved through higher dependence on imports because China could manufacture and give it to you at attractive prices and in order to grow the market, many players, including us at some point of time, had imported from China specific models and labeled it and sold. Okay, I will so let, me, let me ask you a little bit about that. So one is uh, a point where you're importing the entire product and badging it and selling it here. To the point that you're now maybe importing components uh, or like a compressor. So tell us a, a little more about that. Which which are the components that you're dependent more on? You or the industry is dependent more on or has been in the last few years from a China or wherever else? And where are we maybe substituting? Right? Yeah, till 2019, uh, 40 to 50% of the air conditioners sold in India were imported. In Blue Star case, it would have been 25%. Mm -hmm. Then it moved to... Uh, so would that be tubing or compressor? No, complete air conditioner. Okay. okay. Mm. Now, India, because of its small market size, did not have the component ecosystem. It was 2020, the government of India felt that we should go ahead and address this. There are huge imports that are taking place. You know, of course, it started with sure. television, then they moved on to look at that. That is called the scale committee, which looked into how India manufacturing story can happen and within that, what the industry needs in order to make in India. Mm. I do not know why, how air conditioner got identified, but fortunately, air conditioners was identified. We, 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 we were one of the early ones to get into the PLI scheme. Mm. So that that scheme, uh, so I'll come to that. So you said twenty percent in two thousand two thousand nineteen, 
25% was your imports of... But Blue Stars would have been 25%, but the whole industry had some 40% to 40%. So entire, entire, entire finished air conditioners. That is right. Just the label here. Labeled. Okay. So, and what's happened after that? Yeah. So, in when the... As a prelude to the PLI, hmm. if uh, the government focus was very clear that, uh, you know, Pawan Goenka led it and Piyush Goel was directly involved in the exercise... So what all you want in order to make the air conditioners in India? First point is, in research and development, there is no problem. We have the mm. capability. The whole industry has got the capability. The issue is the scale. At a price at which China could make with 120 million production versus some 8 million, that point of time it was 6 million. Mm. So how you will be able to make it at that particular cost is the first issue. And you don't have a competent ecosystem. So the what the government did first was to say that import with the gas field will be banned. Mm. The moment you cannot import with the gas field, even if you get it as two separate units, you have to take it to the factory and do the gas filling and then you have to do the testing. So in a manner of speaking, you need an infrastructure. Mm. So it was a deterrent. Second one government did was that the... Custom duty will go up under a phased manufacturing program. They said over a five-year period how the duty will go up. Again, a deterrent. Third, they brought in a non-tariff barrier called the QCO, which means Bureau of Indian Standards will go and inspect the vendor and his competent suppliers to certify. In any case, during COVID, nobody will be able to travel. China was not allowing. So, no QC approval, you will be able to get it. So, in a manner of speaking, you are forced to look at that, how I will manufacture. Okay. Mm. They introduced the PLI scheme. Mm. So, the PLI scheme, actually, the, the nomenclature is incorrect. The production linked is incentive scheme. Money is not paid for producing. Mm. Money is paid for incremental sale over a previous, particular year. In, yeah. in this case, it is FI22 over that whatever incremental sale over a five-year period, you will get paid as a 6%, 6%, 5%, 4% like that mm. over the years. Now that the base year is fixed, there is a threshold of investment and you have to sell more in order to earn the money. So you have understood the framework. Yeah. Now, it's around 4,500 to 5,000 crores worth of investment has been committed by the industry. In any case, because the import is becoming unattractive. So, manufacturing capacity today is actually doubling. In the 18 to 20 months, India's air conditioning manufacturing capacity has doubled. The PLA is not on the finished goods. PLA is on the components or sub-assemblies. Mm. So, what is slowly happening is the component ecosystem is developing, except for a few items where India has got still a problem, which is the compressor. But by the way, over the years from the time you started your career, the compressor used to be the heart of the system. Now it is no longer the electronic drive is a big component within the air conditioner, apart from the compressor. Electronics India is not having a problem in manufacturing for the developing an IP or manufacturing, but the compressor is a huge capital cost and you need scale. Like for example, if someone wants to set up a compressor, at least you need a 2 million uh, kind of uh, volume. See, Blue Star will do 1 million this year. Mm -hmm. And we, we did the sure. 8 lakh units. Our, our own sale. Industry is 8 million. Our volume was 8 lakhs. This year, hopefully, the industry becomes 10 million. We will be doing 1 million. But 1 million, you you cannot justify a compressor manufacturing. I, I need to do 2 million in order to do. But if I'm an air conditioner seller, if I do a compressor, I won't be able to sell it to anyone. Uh. So globally, if you look at it, the players who have crossed 1 and 1 million, 1 and million over a period of time, they have got their own compressor. And why can't you sell a compressor to someone else? So, it's a competing brand, right? So, the, the, the question is, if, if I have to sell to any one of my competitors, mm -hmm. either it has to be or all three competitors come together to set up a facility. Uh, actually, Mr. Piyush Goel tried that also. Whether Indian manufacturers who hold close to around 50-55% market share can come together and set up. So, then you need a technology. Uh, it, it's not uh, you, you have uh, invested in that.
but our our preference was that uh, look if there is a foreign manufacturer who is coming and setting it up allow them to do so uh, so so would lg be the one in this case or? no the the world's largest manufacturer of compressors is gmcc for example yeah. highly uh, the they have a facility in uh, india in fact gmcc is in maharashtra highly is in gujarat they have invested so the question is uh, we we should not be shutting door to someone right if more people are coming and setting up here it is fine and there is oem suppliers to all the air conditioner manufacturers almost uh, some of them will have captive right see in india the the uh, it is not that uh, uh, all our manufacturing compressors everyone will have to depend on it will take some more time for but otherwise the point i'm making is any other component that infrastructure has come up now hmm. it is today we can claim that uh, manufacturing sector has arrived in that air conditioning also as manufacturing has come up right so you talked about the 25% so would that be would it be correct to say that today it's zero they are not importing finish may, any maybe by estimate it is 5% or so because some brands some some uh, niche models mm. uh, getting sold some 10000 numbers it may get imported you know like uh, Yeah, vertical uh, air conditioner, that kind of first stuff. Otherwise, I don't think it is getting. It, it will not be competitive. First of all, you won't get a QC approval so very easily. Yeah. So now, in terms of cost, let's say if you were to go back to 2019 and maybe uh, uh, use it sort of in a pro rata way, how would that compare uh, today with what we are manufacturing in India versus, let's say, what you were importing at that point? uh landed cost is matched there is absolutely no problem let us say for example you imported something in 2019 and the early 20 if it has landed here that landed cost of that you will be able to make it in india but the difference is when you, when the landed cost means that manufacturer has made some profit yeah. so that will be the gap you have to still match yeah i suspect we will be able to match it in the country for a different reason altogether uh, basically in india you have the raw material prices also high mm -hmm. okay say for example in vietnam if somebody is manufacturing the operating prices of steel and many other things in vietnam will be lower and they do have a free trade agreement with china now they are part of the larger free trade agreement of that block itself okay second is that if you look at india versus uh, thailand the fta the finished goods come under fta components do not come under or raw material does not come under the uh, free trade agreement so therefore basic input cost may be higher in india point number 1 point number 2 is you do have higher interest costs the cost of capital is very high so that is another element the third element is logistics costs are prohibitively high in india so we we, we have to do a lot of work in order to bring down i i'll tell you in our commercial refrigeration uh, deep freezers mm. the your newest launch that's your newest line of launches right you no know, we have been there in that business but I, i'm saying the 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 total cost of packaging hand transportation loading unloading can be 14% hmm. yeah, in, uh, you know in a e bit which is a 8 to 10% the yeah, that much it cost because it is a heavy voluminous item so it is a huge country where you are transporting and the logistics infrastructure is the other issue which boosts the cost so therefore if you ask me in terms of design engineering getting the product there is no problem but input costs and the other costs are higher in india including the cost of capital so I'll, the capital I'll, i will keep aside for a moment so what is the most important uh, metal input cost in in an air conditioner i'm assuming it's copper or would, would there be others as well uh, steel as well as copper okay and uh, what is let's say more price sensitive at this point of time uh exchange rate okay. for the simple okay. reason you are you are getting the copper uh, you mean these are called the inner grooved copper tubes hmm. so you know copper is highly regulated industry and uh, you are the cathodes and somebody processing their tube in within that tube there has to be a inner groove 
which is uh, now Hindalco is trying to make it in India that factories and to come up and uh, the, the the it is a regulated commodity. Second is uh, the electronics content is very high, so you are dependent on the chips or and uh, other. Yeah, and, and I'll come to chips in a moment. So the the tubes, which are very, uh, they are tiny tubes. Yeah. Go around, you know. So that is you're importing uh, as a as a complete uh, tube, or is it? Are you making the tubes yourself? No. Uh, you know, nobody makes the tube. It's a highly specialized project. Hindalgo will start making okay. it. Otherwise, you're reporting The tubes it. are mm. coming. Mm. Uh, that will be getting imported. You get the compressors imported. At this point. And uh, local, some 30% local vendors are available, but 70% of compressors get imported. So, uh, what point do you feel we will be at closer to, if we have to be, uh, a more 100% indigenization level for all the components within an air conditioner at an affordable cost. My philosophy has been slightly different in the sense that uh, A, Indian manufacturing industry should look at creating their own IPs and innovation. For the simple reason, if you can't compete, A, how will you compete with uh, 120 million player with yours? If you want to connect to the global supply chain, uh -huh. you should be meeting them on innovation. Mm. So, first of all, uh, the real problem, according to me, is that like 0.65% uh, of the GDP in R&D, where it is going to take us? Because it, it is it is negligible compared with the, any other country. If you take the top 100 firms, what they have invested in R&D, we are nowhere near. Specifically, the manufacturing sector in engineering, some IT companies have done more than the engineering companies. Now, I am of the firm view, we should look at the innovation, which will include alternate materials, how you will bring down the material content in order to compete. This is the first part. The second principle of mine is that uh, I uh, we should not be madly pushing indigenization for the simple reason, if somebody else have got the resources, if we can give it to you at competitive price, we should, we should go ahead and do that. So the example I keep telling is that uh, I can make pizza at home. Mm -hmm. I will be, first of all, ordering the raw material, some, uh, get all those raw materials. And an oven to make it. Uh, and go ahead and uh, spend my own time. And uh, with all that, uh, I it will be expensive when I calculate all that. And it may not be as tasty as some 150 rupee order, it get delivered. So, uh, just because I want to do it myself, uh, it's as a passion is something different. But on a on a serious business basis, I don't think we should do but, this. So conversely, you are also saying that Indian manufacturers may not be able to achieve that level of efficiency in certain in certain so, cases. If somebody else, particularly is, input, uh, yeah, if somebody else is more competent, please depend on them. You you should not be trying to say that everything I want to make it here. Yes. You have to generate employment, you have to grow the manufacturing industry, but there are numerous areas to do that. But don't, do, you see, what will happen is the consumer will end up paying more price for that. You won't be able to grow the market. So I am saying grow the Indian manufacturing. Second point I am saying is you can compete against the scale only through innovation, invest more in R&D and create the ecosystem. The third is I am saying if some I Something is there, available, go ahead and do that. Uh, get it from there. It's not necessary, we have to indigenous. Keeping that framework, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, in about five years time, uh, import content in an air conditioner manufactured may reduce to some 15 to 20% level. From how much today? Today it may be 30%. So, so the so it's a long journey from thirty to twenty. Yeah. Okay. So the the thing is that you ask what is sensitive, the exchange rate is sensitive. So, uh, you know the in the television interviews, the copper has come down, steel has come down, will the price come down? But uh, the exchange rate, if you see in the one year period, that is much more than the percentage of uh, raw material input cost that has gone down. So, it is important to reduce the import content. Yeah. So, as you uh, look ahead now, and that's really my last set of questions, 
uh, you mentioned electronics and I said we'll come back to it. So there's a lot of interesting innovation that happens in electronics. You know, your air conditioners are now talking to your mobile phones and you can set things in that. How much of that is a determine, I mean, is a driver in the potential of future sales in terms of what consumers will choose? Or is there something else that could make consumers choose which could be more indigenous as compared to maybe what we see today? Uh, in my uh, whole journey of uh, some 44 years of my career, many flop stories are there. The, the, the Wi-Fi, you know, in 2016, Wi-Fi ready, hmm. air conditioners like that we launched. Uh, I, I don't think we crossed 100 numbers. Uh, of sales. Okay. Uh, even today, it will not be even 1%. See, the Indian market is uh, aspirational middle class dominant market. In this category, you have to make the product affordable. Mm -hmm. So this theme you will come across. So one is connected with scale. Mm. The other is connected with, of course, uh, smart manufacturing. The third is connected with how sustainable your product is, apart from regulations, how you can make it sustainable. Think gadgets, gimmicks, gizmos don't really work. And, uh, and the thing is, you want to make the product affordable because 65% of room air conditioners today are consumed in tire 3, 4, 5 towns. And 95% are first-time buyers. And in the and forty five percent are consumer finance dependent uh, consumers. Mm. So you can imagine in this target segment, uh, you have to introduce product at the entry levels, functionally superior, durable, that kind of stuff. The other gizmos, uh, I do not think it will work. But where we should make use of electronics uh, should be. Uh, in uh, energy efficiency improvement. Not for when you are leaving the office, you'll switch off through your Wi-Fi and all that stuff. When, when we launched and we failed, uh, we did a research, we understood that for Wi-Fi enablement, you should keep the Wi-Fi on at home. Yeah. And the people switch off the Wi-Fi when they leave for the office. The next is, we, 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 if you recollect, we, we had introduced decibel cooling, that 24, 24.5, 24.6, anything you can set. I don't think consumer is standing in queue to get this uh, whole thing. So, it is very clear. It is functionally superior, energy efficient, environmentally friendly product at an affordable price. Then only you can grow the market. Yeah. And and yeah, and yeah, the star rating, for example, clearly helps uh, because that helps it, consumers. Decide. No, yeah, but I'm, I'm not very sure. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the question is, even today, it is less than 30% is 5 star. But that's also more expensive compared to a three-star, right? True, but but, but the but the thing is, uh, over the years, what happens is when you, you every energy level change, yeah, five-star will become four-star, three-star will become two-star, two-star will get eliminated. Yeah. So you are moving up, but the very fact that sixty-five to seventy percent of the people are buying three-star means they are not able to afford. But I think the point that you said earlier, which is interesting, you said that we are now at uh, consuming uh, electricity uh, or rather one-fifth the electricity that we were consuming 20 years ago. That's so right. Air conditioners are consuming. That's right. right. Okay. So last uh, question. Uh, there is a lot of seasonal variation now, thanks to climate change. And uh, I can see that when you're interviewed, for example, about air conditioner sales ahead of summer, uh, there is a certain project prediction or a projection that seems to change as you go into April, May, because the weather is changing. How do you look uh, in the years ahead in terms of how uh, air conditioners could get consumed? And do you think that the way climate is changing will uh, make you change your own marketing and sales approach? Or do you feel that the way we see summers, that's sufficient for us to sell what we want? Um, the uh, We have to come to terms with this, uh, the following what I'm saying. Uh, we are playing cricket match in uh, London, it can rain. And uh, then it will be some Duckworth-Lewis method, you don't know who will win, the game completely changes. Uh, if you are in air-conditioned business, you should be prepared for a bad summer. Mm. Now, what is actually happening is, if you, if you, if you analyze the data, mm. that uh, once in three, four years, a bad summer uh, or a wet summer is uh, very much likely. Equally, we are, we, have, we are seeing one trend. The peak sales used to happen in the middle of May. 
it moved to first week of may it moved to last week of april it moved to middle of april nowadays we are seeing this year we saw peak sale happening in march so i uh, because february was very warm march the but this has never happened the march uh, march peaking never has happened in april 15th being peak had happened last year not this summer 2022 summer it has happened so very clearly we are seeing we, we this is an important trend so the the question is that uh, people are not waiting for the peak summer they are buying ahead the second part what i am very clearly seeing is the average age of a buyer coming down so we don't have a published data but our limited data shows that it is now uh, 35 to 40 are all very distinct decision makers for air conditioner which used to be some 45 to 50 kind of a thing now significant amount of youngsters are taking a decision on buying air conditioners third trend within india uh more than a third of the buyers are not buying air conditioners for themselves they are buying for parents or children so that, that that's very clearly evident okay in this uh, whole system um festival season demand has been inching up so that also will balance the seasonality how am I, so fine you are a cricket captain you have one that has batted but rain came then decor louis you don't know what your target is going to be how you are going to meet then you should be having some strategies inbuilt into your uh, business planning which is what we are beginning to do uh in the, in this what needs to be done is uh, earlier when you were dependent on import you are building up the inventory and you don't didn't have a manufacturing ecosystem here so january february march the imports uh, start coming and our lc has opened and uh, april will come may will come even though it is raining you will lump the inventory but very distinctly this summer the inventory pressure is not there because a local manufacturing ecosystem you are able to quickly correct the so therefore the money is not blocked for you so the other part is uh, connected with how you will have uh, complementary products within the company to support this look blue star is a air conditioning commercial refrigeration and mep contracting company okay so what we ensure is our b2b and b2c have a right balance so so for example our q1 results we 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 could deliver decent results basically because we had the b2b uh, contributing to the revenue and the profitability most people would know you for your b2b or institutional that that's right right, right. Uh, we would have add something else in terms of trade no the 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 important thing is that uh, more and more i see uh, the r and d challenges are away the indian air conditioning industry can develop products for india as well as the globe that's no longer a challenge scale indeed is a challenge and i think it will get resolved and very clearly for you to compete in the global market local scale is very important local market also will have to grow and um, i think uh, you know uh, in a reasonable in a foreseeable future india will also be a player participating in the air conditioning refrigeration market for the globe uh, so far it was dominated by china i think we will be able to do that right stagran thank you so much for thank you very much thank you